Hi everyone. Um, so welcome to the open evening. I am delighted that you're all here joining us this evening. Um, myself and my colleagues will be uh, doing a small PowerPoint just to introduce our college and uh, just to welcome you and to give you some information as to what we offer in the college. Um, and I will begin. Um, my name is Francis Trehi, Fran, I am known within my uh, my students on the course, and I teach the level five and the level six SNA course. And um, I would like to just introduce the course and let you know what uh, we do in Portobello for special needs assistance. And as I am a special needs assistant myself, I, um, I can give a lot of information with regard to the job and the children that I work with. So I'll discuss that with you as I go along. But my colleagues are here as well. Um, and uh, we have Jacinta and Sarah, uh, Jenny with us this evening, uh, Karina as well. So um, on that, I will just get started. So today's session, we'll have a look at the SNA Level 5 and the SNA Level 6. They are QQI courses. Um, so they are... Um, well, they're really well from the QQI, they're well certified and they are very professional courses. So there is so much information in them. I teach the both courses and there is so much information on both of these courses. The level five, quite informative. The level six would be quite academic as well, which is great because it prepares you for the next level on level seven. So in uh, Portobello, we have an array of very professional and really easy to deal with, nice and very experienced uh, tutors and lecturers. And there are some of the team that you can see, but on the Meet the Team section of Portobello, you'll be able to see all everyone's profile. Every tutor and lecturer in Portobello have a vast amount of industry experience. Um, they also have experience teaching, teaching in higher education and a variety of research interests. I myself am an SNA for the past 17 years and I have, I am um, very qualified in what I do. I have done a lot of courses as well as being my SNA level five and level six. And that's how I started my education. I went back to higher education when I was uh, in my 40s actually and uh, did a level seven and level eight. And I just want to go on and on and on. I have a complete book for education and the field that I'm in, which is helping children. It is just like a win-win, which is fantastic. So um, what would you want from your course? For me, um, what I wanted from my course was, uh, to be perfectly honest, I went into my career for the hours I went into um, have summers off and weekends and everything was wonderful because I came from a hustle bustle airport scenario um, and I really wanted to change career but when I went in to be an SNA that's where everything just my life really began to be honest and um, now it is my life I um, my whole life is centered around special needs I love being an SNA I had the opportunity to go on to be a teacher, but I love the hands-on experience of working with children with special needs. Um, it's a fantastic work-life balance as well. So I kind of fit into all of these criteria. but for you, it may be either one of these. Um, there are so many people on the courses that have changed careers. We have people coming from banks, nursing, um, other kind of degrees, chemistry, uh, a pharmacist I, I had on one of my cor courses that just wanted to change careers completely. Uh, there is nothing more worthwhile than your influence on a child that has special needs and the joy of seeing an improvement in their lives because of what you can give. So that is what I'm experiencing at the moment. But it could be for other personal circumstances as well, but for any of these reasons, um, it is it's such a rewarding career. So with the uh, level that you will get from your level five and level six, they are level five and level six minor awards. And if you look at the national framework for qualifications, 
Now you'll see there, uh, this is the, the guide um, level one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Um, I would love you all to go on to the highest you can, can, you can go to, but level five is here. Um, and level six, you'll see, is the, you can go on to higher certificates, advanced certificates. And then your level seven is a BA ordinary uh, degree and uh, onwards. So with the special needs assisting uh, level five, there are lots of this different uh, study options available to you. So there are intensive courses. Um, I will warn you that the intensive courses are quite intensive. Um, there is a lot of work behind them, but like that, very, very rewarding. If you are someone that's extremely busy and uh, maybe a very high, uh, high work schedule, um, the intense, of course, might be good for a week's holiday or um, any kind of time that you can get from a busy schedule to be able to fit it in. Um, the other, um, th those ones, all they run, you know, Easter, summers, uh, so they run quite regularly, which is fantastic. There are lots of options available. The part-time online course, uh, they're weekly, one evening over 10 weeks. Um, those courses run um, normally between uh, half past six, seven o'clock in the evening to approximately half nine and sometimes later. There'll be question times answer uh, uh, time during that, that time frame. Um, so they're quite flexible as well. They run over 10 weeks um, and they're a really good um, in the, over the 10 week period because you may be able to get your work experience in during that time as well. Uh, so that's quite beneficial. So the um, how you will study is online teams and um the, it is it, it is very personal even though it's online I, I have worked in the classroom as well and tutored inside the classroom and although i love that personal one-on-one -on -one experience uh, with students um i find the online teaching um can be as personal which is great i wasn't expecting it to be but um it turned out to be quite um, a one-on-one -on -one experience as well um, I'm able to discuss things with students at the end of the course or before the course is online. Um, I also would like to discuss things through email, maybe text, etc. But Thank certainly you. the <laughs> online teams are, are, are great. Um, there's also your course notes up on ePortobello as well. So you will study um, the role of the SNA, the Equal Opportunities Child Development Overview, and um, theories of learning and behavior, physical and intellectual disabilities, uh, communication, language and disabilities. And then you'll have your work experience of 20 hours as well. The work experience um, will uh, give you a real insight into the role of an SNA and the amount of experience that you will receive on that is nearly invaluable. So there are lots of different topics that you'll study on the course and they are really beneficial to the role as well as quite informative as well, especially if you have special needs children in your own family as well. So the special needs assisting level six, that also is available on an intensive online one week. Um, it's also part-time online and on one evening over uh, 10 weeks as well. The same again, it is online study with teams and the course notes then on ePortobello, which is will be your main dashboard, your main page for um, study. With the SNA level six, understanding education, health and safety, teaching methodologies. There are so many things on the level six that is real insight into an individual education plan for a child. Uh, we'll discuss the Epson Act 2004. There we will also discuss literacy, language, um, mathematics, learning skills to support the teaching of maths, and then observations, which would be a key role for an SNA when working with children, um, observing and helping a teacher to assess and planning and evaluation. And there will also be work experience for 20 hours as well. So blended learning um, is when our course is delivered through one workshop per module and distance study online with tutor support. So you will be getting tutor support throughout. Um, 
there will be you'll have email correspondence um for for me i i can use text as well i can give phone calls um so it's really quite a personal experience so everything you need to, for the course and for your study is online and um the tutorial then workshops you can really help them with being able to um learn how to you to navigate the um the websites so a demonstration on how to use the web-based learning platform is given during the induction workshop and coursework is usually given on a week-to-week -week basis to support you to stay on track um, and then i'm just going to um I, I'm just going to see if it, uh, my colleague now will be taking over, I think, at this stage. Um, hang on. Sorry about that. Um, so tutor support is provided throughout your study and all your tutors will aim to support you to succeed and progress in your studies. So we will always be available there for you to assist. Um, no question is a silly question. We will always um, be part of your learning journey and we will all, always try to get you to be the best you can be, particularly with your grades. So on completion of your uh, level five and your level six major award, minor award actually this is, with these recognized qualification, you can embark on a professional career as a special needs assistant in primary and secondary schools. So I myself work in a primary school. Um, a lot of my friends um, um, have colleagues uh, work in an array of different uh, establishments. Some are in all special schools, uh, secondary schools and primary schools. So special needs assistants play an important role in supporting those with learning, physical or behavioral difficulties. And the role of an SNA in the classroom involves assisting the teacher in support um, to support students with special education needs who may need and uh, may also have significant care needs. So the role of an SNA um, incorporates a physical care need and secondary care associated tasks. So you'll be dealing with children with um, possible physical care needs and also children that may have emotional or behaviour uh, issues that you may have to deal with. Um, a lot of the children that I work with particularly are um, children that are on the spectrum, ASD and emotional behaviour disorders. Uh, so these are the children that you will more than likely come across, particularly in, in a classroom, an ASD mainstream uh, or mainstream school with ASD classes uh, attached to those. So uh, there, these would be schools that would be really good for um, if you were to get work experience, you get a lot of experience there. But these are the positions that we would endeavor that you would be working in and the environments that you would be working in after you've completed your level five or level six. So um, I'm on Gaining your QQI level six award as an SNA also allows you to progress to further study. So you can carry on to early childhood care and education, um, BA, ordinary and honors in inclusive education practice, and um, that's level seven and level eight, and the BA, ordinary and honors in early childhood studies. And then the master's MA in early childhood studies or MA in inclusive education, which is a level nine. So I um, I would encourage all of you to um, start and really enjoy and see where you go and hopefully you'll progress through um, a lot of the, the levels that Portobello offer. So supports that we offer is access to bespoke online materials, uh, support from highly qualified academic tutors, and a community of learners and practitioners. Flexible learning to suit the needs of different lifestyles and making education accessible. Um, encouragement and support to become an expert in the field of education by engaging with conferences with the support of your supervisors, becoming critical thinkers and gaining publications and adding to the current bank of research in um, early education. So thank you. Um, 
And if you have any further questions, if you, you can contact Sarah um, by phone or email or visit the Portobello Institute uh, for more information. So I hope that you have um, enjoyed um, listening about the level five and the level six special needs assisting. And I really hope that you can join me someday as a student. And I look forward to um, seeing and hearing from you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Fran. That was absolutely fantastic. I believe Jacinta will be um, stepping in to discuss the level seven and possibly the level eight in special needs assisting. Okay. Um, Fran, I'm just checking with you. Are you going to keep moving the slides seeing as you're on presenter? Oh, mode? yeah. I'll just, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, sorry. Thanks a million. I'll just go that. back on. Yeah. Okay, so my name is Jacintha Murphy and I'm a tutor here at Portobello Institute and um, I've worked as a Montessori teacher and I have provided home July home provision um, for a number of years for children with mild and moderate um, special needs and disability. So that would be my own background. So I'm here to talk to you about if you've completed your level five, your level six, you go on to do your award um, and you decide, what do I want to do now? Um, I'm here to tell you the next step is your level seven in inclusive education practice. OK, it, it will be invaluable to you. Again, like Fran said, you get the learning bug and you just want to know more and more and more and more and I always say the more you learn the more you know there is to know and that you certainly don't know everything and if we're here forever and ever ever we will never know everything but you know when we have a wealth of knowledge behind us it really is applying that knowledge and practice can be so rewarding and um, the <clears throat> BAR in inclusive education practice so the entry requirements, as we were saying, is the is six recognized subjects in your leaving certificate or your you get exemption of 30 credits if you have your minor award for uh, special needs assisting and work experience. Or you can get advanced entry if you have your QQI level six major award in ECCE or indeed the level six major award from the LINK program. Um, if you are a graduate of UCD natural, National Programme from SNAs in Inclusive School Support, you will also gain advanced entry as they are equivalent to 90 credits. So what will you study if you come on to the, the, the level seven with us? You will really build on the knowledge that you have uh, attained at level five and level six. And really it's like almost if you think of a child building a tower, you know, where they put one block down and that's sort of the steady foundation and then they put another block on top and another block on top and another block on top. And um, that really is the way that the study works, that you're not starting into something completely new. You are just building on what has transpired before. Um, Jenny, would you like me to try and share the, the screen? If you can yeah. share your presentation, yeah. that would be fantastic, Jacinta. Thank okay. you. Okay, I just have a look and see. Sorry, what Jacinta. No, you're grand. No problem. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not the most technical in the world, but let's yeah. see how it goes. Can you see that now, Jenny? We can see that, Jacinta. Thank you. And is it in full screen for you? It is. Okay, thank you so much. Um, just I can't see what you see. Mine is in a split screen type thing. Okay, so if you come on to the level seven, you, as I say, you'll build on the knowledge that you had before. And the first module you'll meet <clears throat> is becoming an educator. And I myself will be tutoring this module and I'll be doing a lot, an awful lot of work um, in the design and development of it. It is just the most fabulous module and I really believe it will make a difference on this new degree for all our students going forward. 
um, into the next set of modules because it is like a very detailed orientation for you into the program and into that higher education study. You know, things you'll be walked through things like digital literacy, critical thinking, you know, how to think critically, how to write critically, how to, you know, build reflection and reflective writing and thinking into your work, how to even manage your time, you know. Um, writing academically can sometimes be um, a skill which you have to acquire and the referencing and all of that. This is a module which will teach you all of that before you go on to the next modules. It's all also around your professional and personal development because study, while yes, you gain all the skills you need to be a professional, also it does a lot to your own personal self inside. I am certainly not the same person that I was 20 odd years ago when I came back to study after being in a completely, completely different arena and then realized that I find my life's passion and have been studying on and off ever since. You will also begin to undertake a little piece of action research in this module as well, because in your daily practice in the classroom, um, in whatever role and capacity you're in, you will always be thinking, okay, what am I doing? You'll be reflecting, you'll be evaluating, and you'll be making your practice better. And you'll be looking at your own values and where you stand within that. So the action research, uh, it's just a little kind of, a little tiny piece of this module, but it certainly does get the juices flowing for what is to come. And um, you will also undertake the safeguarding health and well-being and uh, rights of children module. And this is, I mean, it's self-explanatory almost, but you will kind of get a really deeper understanding of children's rights and how that that impacts growth and development of the child and how, you know, all of this, all of what they do along the way, be they early ed, primary, secondary, it is uh, having a lifelong effect. And, you know, regardless of what the potential is, it is to allow every child to have the right to reach their own potential. And I think that's very, very important. And I think that kind of hope and faith in the child's ability as well coming in there. It's around your role in creating environments which promote health, safety, um, you know, as well as the physical and emotional development of children. And well-being being the stepping stone to all learning and development, really, in my mind. I think if you have a, a, a really heightened sense of well-being within yourself, we can learn anything. And we need to, I suppose, one, open our eyes to the fact that child abuse is out there uh, across many socio socioeconomic groups, cultural divides, etc. Um, it, 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 it happens across the board, but that we in our capacity in schools and settings, that we open our eyes to the possibility of it, that we uh, understand the impact that it has on children from zero to 18, particularly if you're working with moderate to severe disabilities, um, you know, where some children may be nonverbal, they may not be able to tell. We need to be watchful and we need to be aware of the signs and symptoms of abuse and then what to do in our role if we have suspicions of uh, abuse taking place. Uh, or indeed, if somebody uh, comes to us with an allegation of abuse, what do we do with that? How do we deal with it? That will all be, we will talk all about that. Um, also, how to work with other agencies to protect children and to become familiar with the legislation underpinning all of that. So it's, it's a really worthwhile module for which prepares you for working with children. And children being anybody 
uh, zero to 18, okay? So promoting, you will also do promoting holistic development of children zero to 12. And here you will be looking at the theories and perspectives of how children learn, how learning is interconnected, you know? Um, our cognitive development doesn't just develop on its own, you know, all the other elements come together. It's all interconnected and interlinked and it's integrated, all areas of development. And how you in your role can support that learning and development and also look at peer learning and indeed how you work within a team as well. So very, very important module there. Um, understanding development in uh, middle childhood, then you will do as well. And it's very similar to the last one and you kind of build on it, but the development uh, of children in their adolescence is included. And this is a very interesting time for children um, as they progress into adulthood. And um, Montessori believed that, uh, just to quote her, she believed that children in the 12 to 18 period needed as much care and attention as a child from zero to six. And I think that's something that's forgotten. While it's very different care and attention, it still is a, a time of need, okay? And depending on the needs that the children you're dealing with have, then the, children, the child who is in adolescence may be uh, at a different cognitive stage as well. So um, you will also undertake some practical work experience and you will um, develop, design and undertake a placement portfolio. And what will this, uh, it will look at mentorship, it will look at uh, being a reflective thinker, reflecting on your practice, how would you support your colleagues, um, you know, looking at shared values within an establishment, be it a school or a setting, looking at practical um, presentation skills and gaining those skills so that you can share knowledge with others and the importance of feedback and making judgment choices and decisions. Okay, so all of that encompassed into that professional practice piece in a setting or school when you are on work experience. And in year two then, and your work experience can be your workplace, you know, your place of work as well. So in year two then, you will have a look at approaches to inclusive education and leadership skills for inclusive practice, where you will look at the legislation and professional guidance. You will look at the impact of inequality and you will look at evaluating the practice, evaluating the impact of leadership on that inclusive practice as well. You will um, look at your setting or school through the lens of inclusive practice and social justice. So, you know, just kind of really looking and thinking, where are we at in, ter in the terms of this and what can we go forward? And as thinking, when you begin to think about how can we go forward, you begin to think of yourself as an agent of change. And an agent of change doesn't have, have to always be the leader or the principal or the teacher. If you can always, you know, that old saying, lead from behind. Okay, so you can be an agent of change in any capacity. Okay, so you'll be looking at your own beliefs, your attitude, your values, and you begin to understand approaches to education and to plan to enhance inclusive practice and provision in the setting or school that you are in. Disability in society, then you'll begin to examine contemporary debates regarding disability, uh, both nationally and internationally. And the psychology of learning and behavior, then you will go a little bit deeper into that whole psychology of learning and behavior and what is that telling you and, and the theories behind that. Leading and managing services for children, then again, looking at leadership management, you know, very much uh, building on what you've done in the other leadership module. Uh, accountability being very important there and understanding legislation and inspection. And of course, looking again within to that self-evaluation and ultimately improved practice because of that. Developing professional practice, again, placement module in year two, where you will reflect and evaluate practice. You will look at key professional issues uh, within your own working role. 
you will begin to understand what is effective practice and to draw on theories and professional knowledge around that. And uh, you will work collaboratively with others and you will be provided or gained, should I say, the tools to support your own personal and professional development. Sorry, I forgot I was moving the PowerPoint. <laughs> so if you get advanced entry, so that is the base entry. But if you get advanced entry, you can see that some of the modules have been knocked off because of your recognized prior learning. And so you do these modules in year one and year two. Okay, so instead of five in year one, you would do three. And instead of five, uh, you would do one, two, three, four, five. You would do the full five in year two. Okay, so how long will this all take and what will be the word at the end of it? Okay, so upon successful completion of the program, you will be awarded a BA or, or ordinary degree in um, inclusive education practice from the University of Essex. Now, this is recognized in Ireland and it is mapped onto the uh, NFQ at level seven. So level seven is a bachelor's ordinary degree, a BA or and it will take you two academic years to complete this study. So there will be, um, so it'll be totaling 20 months with three academic semesters per year. And there's two Saturday workshops and four evening webinars per term, as well as some sessions which are placed in a tutor that would be for your work placement. And um, the Saturday workshops are held online between 10 and one with breaks throughout. Um, and the evening webinars are one to one and a half hours long and are scheduled usually between seven and nine to accommodate students who are working full time. Depending on the entry route, students will take three, between three and six modules each year. And year two includes the placement like we've spoke about. And the three semester structure will ensure you can focus on one to two modules per term while also working on your professional practice portfolio. So that really kind of blinkers the vision uh, and the mode of study to you to do one to two modules per term and that you're just working on your professional portfolio as well at the same time. So the mode of study then, the BA Ord in Inclusive Education Programme, it has been designed for delivery by blended learning. And as Fran, Fran was saying, it really is suitable for people who are working full time, people who have not a lot of spare time, and you, but you want to achieve your degree qualification. Um, I personally have found that um, for me, blended study has been a godsend really, and without blended study, I wouldn't have the qualifications I have today um, because when I went back to study, I always, like Fran is saying, you have to fit it around a, around a full-time job. You have to fit it in around five children and a partner, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, and it's really nice when you come on to the blended learning because a lot of students will be in the same boat as yourself, that they'll be juggling work mm -hmm. and social life or family or whatever it is, okay? and. Believe you me, regardless of you come on the course, you think you have this, that, and the other in line of commitments, but everybody has some type of commitments, you know, uh, who are on the program. So um, I think that it really is a good mode of study. I also agree with Fran when she said that the blended learning, that the screen doesn't damage the relationship in any way. Uh, between the tutor and the students or indeed the students and student uh, interaction because there will be like groups put together you will get time to um, interact with each other and we have uh, a portal called work vivo now that you can interact on with each other as well it is a moderated format forum so it is much safer than the whatsapp group because what we've often found before is that people in a WhatsApp group, they'll stick in something, oh, it's this or, or it's that. And then we've 25 assignments all with this or that wrong in it. 
So it's a nice on the work vivo if you are talking about assignments and stuff and um, that there is somebody just in the background that if you are going down a rabbit hole, we can pull you back out of it and just, you know. And the other thing I think that the tutor knows your name is very important because we are, I mean, we're not, I don't know what the word is, but we're really facilitators. We're facilitating you to reach your full potential, to attain your goals. And we are facilitators. And I always say to my students, this is your class. It's not my class. So, you know, you tell me what you need. You tell me what, what we need to do. Um, and I think in that way, while we cover a certain amount, and yes, there's, you know, you cover your weekly sessions and all the rest of it. When we come together, it's more about discussion and questions and answers and um, understanding a little bit more. So if something seems a little bit difficult online, that's what you bring to the table at the sessions because that's when we can discuss it and make it very clear. And I think all the tutors have such a wealth of knowledge um, on the ground in practice that uh, they can make the theory come alive in practice, which I think is very, very important. So before the induction webinar, you'll be given your login details to the online portal, Eat Portobello is what it's called. And you will have course notes, reading lists, podcasts, articles of interest, assessment guidelines. Um, and the content is structured in an easy format, divided into sessions, which you can cover at your own pace. Don't leave, don't leave reading them all at the end, though. Kind of, you know, divide up your time, which, it, which you need to keep up with it. That's the only thing. And if you're waiting for time to study, it won't ever happen for you. So, you know, while the spuds are boiling, have it on the worktop. 20 minutes, you'll be surprised what you can get read in 20 minutes. If you're waiting for a block of, you know, a couple of hours to study, I don't know about your lives, but certainly I would never have it anyway. Um, I wouldn't be allowed to have it. <laughs> so, um, you know, do it while you can, where you can, when you can. And uh, I think that's the, the goal. Um, blended learning means that you will have an optional in-person induction. So um, the induction to the program, to the level seven program, will be face to face in the college, but uh, it will also be online as well, should you have difficulty in attending. Um, you will be supplied with notes and reading material, have online webinars facilitated by your tutor. You'll have email support from your tutor, um, opportunity to complete formative tasks or drafts. Um, be able to apply what you're learning in your everyday practice. And I think that's very important because I have often read something uh, when I was studying and you think, oh, I'm not sure what that's about. And you might even read it again and you still think, oh, you know. And then all of a sudden you go in to the classroom and you see the child doing something and you think, that's it. I have it. That's what they were talking about. Uh, in the paper that I was reading and you go back and you read it again and all of a sudden you can see it in a different light and I remember when when I was studying I, I often jotted children's names behind beside different theories because that's where I could see them happening so it, it, again with the the old petrol and diesel prices at the moment not having to leave your home is absolutely fantastic because who can afford to be driving uh, when they don't have to so you will need internet connection. It doesn't have to be outstanding internet connection. I understand all about poor internet because we live with mountains surrounding us, which is beautiful to look out the window at, but when you know you need to have speedy broadband, it's not so good. So um, you know, you do need interconnection, internet connection. It doesn't have to be the best of the best, but it certainly has to be working and ensuring that you can upload your assignments on time. So you are able to study at a time that suits you, whether it's, you know, before everybody gets up in the morning or when everybody goes to bed at night or snatching those 20 minutes throughout the day or when you're sitting at a football match or whatever. Um, so there really is flexibility in studying through blended learning because you have the contact and you have the support. And just what I would say to you is, just send that email, okay? So all the assessments are smart assessments. So they are specific, they're measurable, they're attainable, they are realistic and they're timed, okay? So they are very real. 
I suppose is what you will say. You will be linking the theory to the practice in almost every assignment across the board, okay? Um, there's a range of assignments to suit every learning style and therefore giving you the opportunity to excel because some people might be phenomenal at putting a blog together and, and you know, finding the information and other people might be fantastic at writing an essay or some people are fantastic at it all, okay? So assessments for this degree are not exam based, so they will all be um, written or oral or whatever. So instead the assessment vary for, from between essays, um, practice focused assignments, child studies, observations, uh, audits, IEPs and IBPs, so the individual education plan and, or the in individual behavior plan, so um, helping to create that, uh, development plans, presentations, showcasing your own practical skills. Group assignments are going to add another dimension to their learning practice because it'll break up the isolation while you're studying online, but it'll also give you the benefit of peer learning. So what I would say to you is never be nervous about group assignments. Get in there, get your stuck in, get your hands dirty. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, what you're saying is right, wrong, brilliant, not brilliant, whatever. Tease it out, talk it out, and eventually by looking at it and reflecting on it critically, and when, we're talking about critical thinking too. We're not talking about criticizing. We're, we're kind of debating almost with ourselves. Who said this and who said that and what's it like in practice? Or in fact, do th does this even work in practice, et cetera, et cetera. So as I say, the, the group assignments, while they can be a little bit daunting at the beginning, are absolutely a phenomenal way of learning and also about getting to know your peers. And you might find great study tips from your peers as well as you're doing that group assignment. So studying through blended learning is often said to be isolating, but not at Portobello Institute as there is a student forum. forum. And of course, I jumped the gun again, as I want to do, as I've already mentioned WorkVivo to you. And WorkVivo as well, you can pop up there at the beginning of the program, you know, hi, my name is Jacinta, I'm from Kildare, anybody else from Kildare doing the program? You know, and you can even get little study groups going because I know when I studied uh, a number of years ago, I ended up with a study buddy from Dublin and um, another time just on a forum such as that, I popped in, hi, I'm Jacinta, I'm from Kildare, another lady from Kildare and another lady from the outskirts of Dublin. And we traveled to all the face to face classes together and everything. We discussed assignments. We had group calls. We had great fun together and we went out. Uh, and not a few times as well, just, you know, to relieve the stress, <laughs> essential. Um, so, as I say, you know, get in there, get to know people um, and put your hand out there on work vivo. And if you find something interesting, an interesting article, you've read something really interesting, pop it up there, share it for everybody. Okay, and, and so it becomes a sharing space, you know, if, you, if you're worried about a, a reference or you can't, you, you saw something in something, but you can't remember where you read it. Pop it up there. I read such, 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 such somewhere. It's in my notes. Haven't a clue where I got it. Anybody have any ideas? And you'll be surprised. Everybody will come in with something and you can go and search those papers then. So it's a great interactive space. So please do uh, use WorkVivo. It's fantastic. So there will be interaction at the webinars as well. And I would encourage you at the webinars to turn on your cameras and your mics. Nobody cares if you're in your jammy. Okay, you rolled out of the bed, stuck the hair up, whatever, doesn't matter. Just turn on the camera. It's quite difficult to speak to the screen all the time. Um, but when you're getting, also uh, your tutor's getting feedback as well then from you, you know, getting a, a sense of whether things are being understood and all the rest of it, if there's a visual. So as I say, we're not looking to see whether you're in the jammy or not. We're only looking to see if you are understanding it and also when you go into the groups as well that other people have a face um, to see as well which is much more interactive and people are much more inclined to um, take part. 
So also ensure your mic is working on your device. Okay, so you may need a headset or you may not. So just check it out. I don't need a headset, um, but I know some students say that they do. I have no idea about digital stuff like that. So, um, but I'm sure if on the first webinar, it doesn't work out for you, just get yourself a cheapy mic and um, pop it in, okay? Uh, alternative programs and progressions. So uh, if you've done your BA ORD, you can then move on to the BA Honours uh, in Early Childhood Studies, or Early Childhood Care and Education, or the BA Honours in Inclusive Education. And uh, ultimately then you can go on to do the MA in Early Childhood Studies or the MA in Inclusive Education and SEN. And that would be a postgraduate graduate cert and diploma and ultimately degree. So um, just before I hand you over to my colleague, um, Kirina, just to say to you that if you attain your level seven as well, which will allow you to uh, be more employable as a special needs assistant in primary and secondary schools and indeed in special educational settings, um, or uh, as a name, support worker in the early year setting and um, there is an increasing need for highly skilled practitioners in all of these roles. You might also take on a role as a social care worker uh, focusing on children with SEN, special educational needs. You would be elig eligible to apply for roles in agencies such as PUBL or the National Council for Curriculum Assessment in the areas of inclusion and inclusive practice. Uh, you might become a civil servant if you're interested in policy development. You might work in a support role, su supervision of professionals such as occupational therapists, speech and language therapists, because many of those therapists um, advertise for degree-led students to uh, lead uh, and support and facilitate um, social skills groups to enhance what they are doing. And you might continue uh, on to the BA Honours and ultimately on to the Masters, or you might go and do the PME, which will lead you into a career in teaching. So just to say to you that if you have completed your level seven with Portobello Institute, that the level eight then will... Um, be a walk in the park basically for you. <laughs> so because you have your level seven and like we were talking about those building blocks. So now you have all this wealth of knowledge behind you. Um, you are going to choose to do your level eight. And if you've done your level seven with Portobello Institute, then you will only have to uh, produce the dissertation for level eight. Um, so your research project will be a topic of your choice so I always say what did you enjoy reading about at level seven what do you want to know about in your practice so really really thinking about uh, the, t the research topic uh, something that is close to your heart as well and then you would be assigned a supervisor and you would work closely on a one-to-one -one basis with them to produce your level eight uh, BA honors research project if you come into the master's in or the level eight in inclusive education, practice and SEN, then you will have to do some bridging modules uh, just to bring you up to speed before you do your research project. Okay, so I look forward to working with you on your level seven and hopefully on your level eight as well. Um, if you have any further queries, contact Jenny or Sarah, who will be more than willing to talk you through uh, any queries you may have. And indeed, if you want to enroll, they're the ladies to contact as well. And without further ado, I hand you over to Dr. Karina Blackburn to talk you through the MA in Inclusive Education and SEN. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jacinta. Hi, everyone, and welcome. I'm so sorry my camera doesn't work, and I did move computers into my new computer, and for some reason it's still not working, but I am here, as you can hear from my voice. Jacinta, are you okay with sticking with sharing the slides, or do you want me to start sharing mine? 
Uh, whatever is best for you, Karina, I'm totally easy. I, I'd love if you did, Jacinth. <laughs> Perfect. That's grand. You work away. Um, as Jacinth said, I'm now going to talk about the Masters. So what is lovely, I suppose, about starting with Portobello is that you really have that opportunity to continue your path of study, if you so wish. And those of us that are here, a lot of us have done just that, that we started like that with our level sixes. I did my master's blended and I then went on and did a doctorate blended. And now I'm feeling very privileged to be involved in the MA in inclusive education um, and special education needs because it's it's where I work because I work in AIM at the moment. So inclusion is very, very central to everything that I do in terms of my daily teaching, um, my working in mentoring roles with early year services, and also um, in terms of research projects that I would do. I have my own early year setting, so I know exactly the challenges that you face difficult it is to to support the inclusion of all children in your setting and that really is the essence of the masters on inclusion it's about yes supporting children with additional needs but it's about inclusion for all children um regardless of whether they're coming from minorities or it's special education needs or that as we would call it normative developing but we know all children have needs now what's I suppose what's beautiful about how this is slide, if you're feeling you're, you're, you're feeling like taking that path up to a level nine, what's beautiful about the master's program for Portobello is that there are points that you can exit out if you feel, well, you know, I think I've got enough from this or my life commitment has become too much. Um, so there are stages that you can exit. Um, I don't know if it's a good starting point that the first thing we tell you is where you can exit. It's not really the intention, but it's. I suppose sometimes it's nice to break it down and realize, well, you do it in stages. So after year one, if you completed both of those modules, there is the option. Now, it's it's not necessarily where you start because when you enroll, you are effectively enrolling to complete the master's studies. But we do know life happens for people and sometimes things can become difficult. So in consultation with um. Dr. Margarita, who is the program director, you can discuss these options if you do find that you're finding it all too much. So after year one, if you've completed the first two modules and you just find life has got in the way, you can decide to pause your studies or you can decide to exit and you can at that point exit with a certificate. Now, after year two, which it is a two year program, but during year two, you will do two modules and you will also do a dissertation. But if again, you're feeling it's a bit much, you might decide to do the two modules. So after two years, you've completed four modules, but you're now also feeling, well, I, I, I have enough now. You can at that point exit with um, the diploma. But again, it's in discussion with um, Dr. Margarita, how you would do that. And I, I suppose our support would be to try and get you to do the complete masters. But we do realize life can bring you in other directions. And then obviously, if you're going to complete the whole MA, well, you'll have done four modules and you will have also completed your dissertation. There's also the option to spread it out over three years as well. There is an extra fee for it. It's, it's, it's nominal enough, but there is an extra fee. But that's also an option brings you on that particular journey. So in terms of entry requirements for the module, um, there are a range of different entry requirements. And what I would say is if you're feeling, well, this is something I really, really want to do, but I'm not quite sure where my qualification sits in here, the best thing to do is contact Portobello and they'll have those discussions with you and see if you have the criteria. And if not, as Jacintha mentioned earlier, maybe there might be a bridging way to get the criteria you need in order to get entry onto our master's programme. So in the first instance, what we would really be looking for would be that you would have a BA honours degree in inclusive education or relevant subject areas and ideally that you would have a qualification of a 2-2 or higher. The next option we'd be looking at would be that maybe you have a BA honours in a relevant subject area 
but to sort of compensate for maybe not having as high a, a, an academic attainment, that you would have a lot of experience. And this is something that would obviously support you in your studies. Now, again, that's something that's assessed on an, an individual basis. So again, it's about coming to the college, having those conversations to see if you have the criteria that's needed for entering the master's studies. We'll also look at, at students who have a BA in ordinary level in relevant subjects, but also with that, a BA in honours in another subject area. Um, and again, in this scenario, we would be looking at how you can show experience of working in the sector so that you would have that rich fund of knowledge from your working um, with children with additional needs or in inclusion on a daily basis. Another um, entry route, if you like, is via having a postgraduate qualification in a relevant subject area or a postgraduate qualification that may not be in that subject area. But again, you can provide evidence of sufficient experience of working in the sector. And again, for some school students, we will always look at the possibility of an exemption in terms of that 2-2 classification with two, uh, maybe a 2-3 being accepted if you have extensive experience. But again, each of these entry routes are in consultation with um, the programme director. So in terms of the actual programme, what will you be studying? Well, in year one, as I said, there are two modules that you need to complete in order to have completed um, year one. So the two modules are the first one you'll do in the first semester, and that looks at facilitating inclusive environments. And then the second module, and I suppose this is the one that I'm developing, so I'm very, uh, they are very passionate about it, and it's looking at special education needs, but it's looking at it with a different lens. We look at it from the capabilities approach. So that approach in itself is really, really interesting because we move away from previous models of looking at educational needs such as medical and social and look at it instead from that strengths-based approach, which again is central to the work of early childhood policy in Ireland at the moment that looks at inclusion, moving away from SNA models Models, to inclusive models and to strengths-based approach. So that really grounds you in something that's re very relevant to practice in Ireland at the moment. In year two, then bearing in mind, you're now going to be looking at doing your own research project. The first of the modules is introducing you to researching with children and young people um, so it's about participatory research and supporting you to develop those research methods so you can complete your dissertation. And the second um, module, you have a choice. There are two. One, you can do psychology of development and emotional well-being, or the other one that you might prefer to do or not is a critical underpinning of the ethics for inclusion and diversity. Now, both of those modules will support you with your dissertation as well. So year two is really about grounding you in further thinking in terms of inclusion, but also giving you the tools that you will need to complete your research project. And what you do aligned with those two modules is the whole time you're working on your research. So you're studying and getting ideas, which will in turn then support you to actually write your own independent research. So in terms of um, why would you complete this? Well, completing the master's in special education needs in itself is enjoyable because it really is where early childhood education is at the moment. In all policy, you will hear the word inclusion and the importance of inclusion. And it's very much incorporated into all of our that really you can't develop quality in the early years sector without also thinking of inclusion and inclusive practice. So it will really challenge you to think of the biases you might have, to think about your current practice and also to support you in thinking more inclusively and give you new ideas and new thoughts about how you can adapt your practice in your current context. 
It also, if you're in the position that you're thinking that you might like to do something else, it'll obviously open doors in that regard as well. So in its own right, it's going to enhance your own personal knowledge. It'll support your expertise in terms of early childhood study, studies. It'll maximize your teaching and learning experience. And it will also extend your professional knowledge. And what fundamentally you want to happen is that you will then be able to transfer that knowledge into your da daily practice. Are there career paths out of it? Absolutely there are. And really, as I said, inclusion is a big thing at the moment. So no matter what level of the early childhood sector you're thinking of bringing your career to, you will have to engage yourself in the concept of inclusion. So it would support you in any role you might take. So you might, like myself, want to go into lecturing and further higher education so that you can share the knowledge and fund of knowledge that you've gained from your academic study, but equally from your practice. Um, there are options to register with the Teaching Council, but again, that's assessed on an individual basis. Um, it could open uh, opportunities with the Ombudsman, which obviously is all start quality and the different within those organizations um, it opens opportunities for working with the des inspectors um, and equally the two slay inspectors and as we know we're at the most exciting time in terms of early childhood and many many new opportunities are going to be opening opportunities we don't even foresee at this moment because there's so much development early childhood is where government money is it's where government interest is because of all the research that's been done that says early childhood makes a difference but the caveat that goes with that is it only makes a difference when inclusion is to the forefront so i really honestly believe with the new organization for childcare childcare ireland many more career opportunities will open as well and again if you have a master's you're in a very very good position to advance your career in any of those areas that your path might bring you. Um, other things that are on our slide there is employment as someone to standardize the qualifications in QQI um, or HETAC either. Um, and it will also provide you with opportunities uh, for CPD. And even if you're thinking in terms of at the moment of core funding, and you know the way you are now, there's an expectation to show that you're raising your quality and you're raising your quality standards. By standing over these qualifications, that's really, really very clear evidence that you are progressing, you're thinking, you're expanding the funds of knowledge you have and you're learning more and more ways to enhance quality within your earlier setting. It also really positions your own self-confidence to be able to talk to these external agencies because more and more we're working in multi-professional contexts. So it's important to take on your own professionalism and confidence in who you, you are yourself as an early years educator um, and feel that you're just as much on an equal par with whoever comes in the door, whether they're an inspector or whether they're the multidisciplinary teams um, in Enable Ireland or with the HSE as most of them are now. Um, so because of your knowledge, you can talk to them on a par, you'll understand what they're talking about, but you'll also be able to share your practice and underpin why you do what you do in terms of supporting the inclusion of all children in your setting. So in terms of the support that we offer, well, the one thing about Portobello, I suppose, our college, we're very into personal one-to-one. -one. So every student that enrolls means a lot to us. And we really go out of our way as lecturers to support you on your learning journey. We know everybody's learning journey is unique. It's different for you than for other people. Challenges will come in your path that mightn't come in someone else's. And likewise, I suppose other people have. So just like you look at each child as being unique, we look at each student coming in our door as unique. And we do everything we can to support you during that journey. So just like Jacinta explained and Fran before her, we very much have platforms of learning for you. So when you enroll, you get access to what we would call bespoke online materials. In other words, we have selected these specifically 
because we believe they will support you in your learning journey. So we have put together up-to-date readings, videos, podcasts that will all be available to you to literally just access and start immersing yourself in the thinking around inclusion, around children's rights and about the rights of their families and how you can support them in that context of inclusion. We would also encourage you, however, to become independent researchers and we will give you ideas on how to go along those paths. You get constant support from all of our highly qualified academic lecturers um, and as I gave you a little bit of a drift of me, we do specialise in inclusion and we do specialise in special education need, both from our academic backgrounds, but from our practice backgrounds as well. What we see ourselves here in Portobello is developing the concept of a community of learners. So we're not sort of necessarily the holders of all the knowledge, but it's the community of learners. So it's your students. It's all of us together are co-constructing knowledge. We're all coming together to make meaning of academia, to make meaning of practice and develop new knowledge through our research. What Jacinta highlighted so beautifully there, what's beautiful about working with poor development Bellow is it's very flexible. You can really go in on that online platform whenever suits you. You can access those readings at times that suit you. And I suppose the other thing as well as lectures, we know what it is to work in a blended and learn through a blended environment. So we know the concept of waiting for a football match to start and reading a paper. We know the concept of maybe traveling on a bus and putting on your ear pods and listening to a, a podcast. So it really, really is flexible. And the idea behind that then is that it can blend in with your unique lifestyle and make education accessible to you. Sometimes I, I would have been cooking the dinner and listening to something in the background. So you make it work for you and come to us as your tutors and lecturers to support you with that. Um, we very much um, have encouragement and support um, to become an, an expert in the field of education. That's really where we're trying to help you to go. So we will be very much, I suppose, supporting you to have the confidence to engage in conferences, to go and listen to them, but also sometimes to consider presenting at them, because sometimes it's a shame to do all that work and just let it dust, because every bit of research you do is extending to the pool of knowledge on inclusion, on special needs, on early childhood education. And that goes back to what we were talking about, that community of learners. We're all learning together, but we're all also sharing knowledge, sharing experiences, sharing findings. So we will be encouraging you to become critical thinkers, to open up ideas, to question ideas, not just to be um, recipients of knowledge, but instead to make meaning from knowledge and challenge knowledge. Um, we'll be supporting you to gain publication, to actually publish some of your own work. Um, and as I said, that's all then adding to the bank of research in inclusive education. So you yourself, as you go on this journey, will be contributing to knowledge, contributing to new ideas, extending thinking. So on one hand, you're extending your own learning, but you're also bringing that back to a community of learners within the sector, uh, within the college, within your peer-to-peer, -peer, within your own organizations. The new knowledge that you gain, we would hope you would also disseminate and share that with colleagues, with friends, with people who are interested, parents, families. Um, so Jacinta, if you could just go on to the next slide till I just give you an idea of the supervisors here. We are all um, very actively involved in research and learning ourselves. So Denise Flood, she is the academic director over all of Portobello and she also lectures on the partnership with parents child protection and welfare. And like that, that comes from a rich experience of working in those fields outside academia and then bringing those ideas into academia, 
drawing theory and practice together. Margarita, who is the director of the master's programme, her research interests include outdoor and risky play, STEAM, which of course is another very in topic in early childhood at the moment. Um, she's very interested in bringing in information technology and communication technology into the early years. Um, psychology, cognition and early childhood education. And like myself, she's very interested in special needs and inclusion, research methods and complementary and sequential designs and quasi experimental research designs. Now, unfortunately, Marguerite is not here herself today. But again, when you're on the programme, she will share her research interests with you and give you more in-depth insights into them if that's something you're interested in. Colette Saunders is also a lecturer on the program and her interest is very much on children's rights, professionalizing the workforce, workforce policy and action research. Rachel Dunn's interests are gender, therapeutic work with children, play and play therapy. Denise Baker is very interested in eth ethnics and minority groups and human rights. And then myself, I know this is only for me just a glimpse of what I'm interested in, but I'm particularly interested in the development of quality in early childhood education with a particular focus on inclusion in early childhood education. I'm really interested in the impact of policy on practice. Um, and in that regard, I also find myself very much being an advocate for the early years educator. And I'm very interested in hearing the voice of the educator more and more in policy so that rather than being the recipients of policy, that you're the shapers of early childhood policy in order to bridge the gap between policy at design stage and the reality of it when it actually is at ground level. So in that regard, I'm obviously very interested in the role of the educator. I'm equally interested in research methods and I have a specific interest in online research methods, if that is something that you want to use within your dissertation, and also children's participation in research. That's something else I have a lot of interest in. And then finally, Samantha Cooney, um, she's also in the program, she's interested in trauma-informed teaching practice, special education and culture in childhood. Now, again, I think in terms of research interest, that gives you a glimpse of what we're interested in. Since I don't see you in that, and I know you, you're also a lecturer on the degree program. Would you like to share your research interest, Jacintha? Uh, I'm not sure if my mic is still on there, guys. Um, is it Karina? Is my mic still working? Yeah, I can hear you anyway, so I assume Perfect. so. Perfect. Um, well, my um, love, I suppose, is inclusion and the impact of inclusion on children and families and how that that has a long term impact on learning, on development, on success. Um, on well-being, self-confidence, et cetera, et cetera. So certainly um, inclusion, particularly in the area of race, um, but also in the area of family diversity, I think is a very interesting um, topic because there are diverse families from diverse backgrounds and we need to be knowledgeable we need to gain their perspective of how best to meet their needs how best to work in a quality set to, to provide a quality pr provision and practice which incorporates them um, and which reflects them i think that's very important as well and um, most of my level eight students would use case study approaches um, so i suppose that's where my expertise lies. I only had one student who did actual research. So um, that's it off the hop. That's what I love. <laughs> and Fran, would you like to share interests? Yes, I am really interested in inclusion myself. Um, it's a passion of mine uh, as I work as an SNA. Uh, the school that I work in. Um, has integrated initially and now we're nearly on almost full inclusion uh, with our special needs children. We're really proud of it. 
um, and that is a massive one of mine. Um, I'm also very, very interested in several particular special needs. So I would be highly interested and do a lot of courses on emotional behavior disorders um, and autism, autism spectrum disorders as well. Um, because I have a passion for children with emotional behavior disorders, I've worked with many over the past 17 years, but inclusivity is my priority. And yeah, like everyone here, it's it's something that I'm proud of in the, where I work and with Portobello as well. I am so proud to be part of a college that would um, would promote inclusion the way that we do. And uh, yeah, it's it's something that I love to pass on to students. Yeah. Thank you, Fran. And I think some of the words you captured there, and I think that would be, again, the essence of us in Portobello. It's about passion. Like we teach because we're passionate about what we do. Um, we developed this module because we're passionate about inclusion. We felt there was a gap. Um, so it's lovely that you can progress from level six or le all the way up to your master's around inclusion and as I said it is central to everything that we will be doing in the coming years in the early years sector I have absolutely no doubt about that and it's I suppose passion that drives us to teach to research and to be involved in communities of practice that we hope you will join as well so that we can all be advocates for social justice for people that are marginalized and find things difficult so that we will have a better more tolerant society in the future so i think that's it really we'd like to thank you all so much for coming today we hope you found the evening very helpful and i know now we're going to stay on for some questions and maybe sarah and jennifer you have something to add here now Thank you so, so much for that, Katrina. Thank you, ladies, Jacinta, Fran and Katrina, of course. That was fantastic. So we appreciate your time. Um, if any learners have um, questions that they would like to add to the chat box, um, we are here. We're going to be here for the next couple of minutes. We'd be happy to help. If not, feel free to visit the website or you can contact Sarah on 01892-0041 with regards to SNA 5 and 6, and you can contact myself then on 01892-0031 with regards to level 7, 8, or 9. We're always happy to help. Georgina Connolly, I'm only doing uh, level 5 and 6. Just like to know when I will get my logins. Georgina, if you have secured your place on the course and you are fully registered, you should have those within 72 hours. You'll certainly receive everything that you need before the course commence date. And can I just say, if I am um, with you, Jordina, welcome, and I hope to see you soon. Ladies, there are no further questions um, that I can see here. Um, as soon as I said that, Derek, hi, Derek, how are you? Uh, welcome. Do you have to be on the webinars every week? I presume this is for five and six. Uh, no, you don't have to be on the webinars every week. Um, you can, they are recorded. I love recording them uh, because it gives an opportunity for students to catch up. And as my colleagues uh, said earlier, we all have lives. They're very, very busy. And the main reason for uh, online learning is because of that. So um, yeah, if you can't attend, uh, the, the sessions will be recorded. And then you can email uh, your tutors if there's any difficulties after that. Hope that helps. Fran, what I find fantastic as well is um, many times our learners will be able to attend, but as they're working their way to their assignments, they might just want to go back and listen over something that was covered. So to have the recordings is fantastic. Mm. Recordings are great. Yeah. Sometimes as well, I um, like to gather the links and send them in, in an email so that you have your sessions um, in one place. Um, that can work sometimes. Some, some people may have difficulties with that. So I tend to put everything together and maybe send it out. Or I have lovely colleagues who might do it for me. <laughs> but yeah, I tend, tend to do that. That is very, very helpful. Oh, Jordina saying she's doing the intensive course and getting quite nervous now. 
Jordina, there's don't no need to be now. nervous. Yeah, Fran, over to you, actually. No, don't worry. There is a lot of information, um, but they probably, as we were talking about recorded sessions, you can go over them again and again. I've often said to students as well, not that I like to accompany students on walks, but um, if they were able to put them on the phone while they're walking, there's some parts of your course that you might want to go over. And actually, it's great. I've done it myself. Um, when I'm studying, I would kind of download certain things and use it while I'm walking. So don't worry too much about that. There's a lot of information, um, but there is a lot of help as well. Honestly, um, as soon as you're stuck, you just give us an email um, and we'll be straight back to you to help. Or a phone call. Sometimes students can't really get some things when you do when you're on the, the email. So if I probably call as well, um, but you'd be well able for it. Don't worry. Honestly, it'd be fine. Can I just add to that? Sorry, sorry Cindy, go ahead. Um, can I just add to that that sometimes, you know, when you see everything here tonight, like you see level, talking about level five, level six, level seven, level eight, level nine, and while it's all very informative, it can all seem a lot, but you have to remember that when you're actually doing it and when you're actually in there, you'll be doing it step by step. And any of the modules we've been talking about tonight, you know, you, you'll have a starting point, you know, where you'll be introduced to the module and then you'll be gradually building on the knowledge as you go through. So it won't be all just thrown at you in the in on the first day. Um, you'll be supported and walked through it. So you, you're, you're not expected to come in knowing um, anything about it. It's just that tonight gives you an overview. Would I be interested in that rather than, you know, oh my goodness, I'll have to know about all of this because you will, but you'll be walked through it step by step at a nice pace. So don't worry at all is what I would say to you. And the other thing I would say is don't ever say I am only doing level five and six. You are doing level five and six. That's as worthy as anything else. And we all started at level five and level six. So Absolutely. good on you. I wish you the best of luck with it. Well Thank said, you, ladies. Rosaira says, with level seven, there are Saturday webinars. And will these be also recorded? They absolutely will be. Yes. I don't see any further questions. So what I was going to say there is, um, I remember Jacinta saying to a learner who came in quite nervous. We had an open evening years ago prior to COVID in the Institute. And she said, just never go quiet. Don't ever go quiet. We're there. We're here to assist. We don't know if there's anything going on with you. Life does get in the way. If you let us know, we will support you. And we will see you to the finish line. And I thought that was fantastic. Yep, just send the email, you know, while you're quiet, we think you're motoring along nicely. But if you are have a little roadblock or anything like that, um, be it life, be it the what you're reading or whatever, just send the email. That first email, and then that starts a dialogue between the two. And by the time you have a little back and forth, everybody is good to go. Or as friends, it's like, sometimes it's a Teams call or something like that uh, required. But often a little back and forth, I find, gets things moving again. I 100% agree with that. But I'll also say as well that um, no question is a silly question. You'll find sometimes on the course that there's students that are wanting to know the answer of a question that they feel that they haven't got the confidence to ask. So never feel it's a silly question because you might be helping other people on the course, but I'd love to reassure people that you like what Jacinta said, that you, you're you not supposed to know anything that you're going to learn. So, you know, just say, ask anything at all. And with the questions as well, I always say, if you want to know it, at least five other people in the, in the chat want to know it too, and you be brave and just get in there and ask it. <laughs> There is a question here from Sarah Hanley. Sarah, um, yes, there is a payment plan. There's a payment plan for um, the level seven, level eight and level nine. You can absolutely avail of that by paying a deposit and the balance over a certain amount of monthly installments. So I am taking um, your details and I shall email you uh, the breakdown tomorrow morning 
you'll have that to hand. And then, you know, if there's any further questions or queries, you can give me a quick call. Um, I'm available from eight to four, Monday to Friday. You're very welcome. Okay, well, if there's no further questions, we'd like to thank you for joining us this evening. We really appreciate your time. And I'd like to say a special thank you to Jacinta, Fran, and Karina as well. Thank you so much. Thank you.